Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make these rose covered cabochons. And mine look like this, the two different ones that I made. So it's the same basic technique making both of these, but the only difference is the amount of roses that I've added on to them. So this one, as you can see, I put roses all the way around, so basically the roses are the frame of the cabochon. And then I bail at the top. But this one, I just did a little feature of roses on the top and one side there. I thought that would give a really nice look as well. And then you can also see the braid that captures the cabochon in place and holds it securely. And you just have that little feature of the roses. So whichever one you'd want to do, it's the exact same technique. I'm going to show you how to do it. We can also choose whatever way you want to add your roses onto them. So if you want to learn how to do this, then keep watching. So it's these materials here that we then need to use. Now first of all here I've got two different gauges of wire, but they're both regular round silver plated copper wire that I'm working with. The first one is a 0.8 mil, and this is going to create the braid around the cabochon and also the bale, so the structure of the piece. And then this is a 0.6 mil. This is what we're going to make the roses with. Now finally here I have my cabochon. This can be anything that you want. I'm just working with an oval one, and this is just a red agate banded one, really nice colours there. I thought that would go nicely with the theme of the roses. This specific one is four and a half by three centimetres, but like I said, you can use whatever cabochon and the shape and size that you want to. So let's get it together and let's get started. So the lengths of wire that we'll need is then five lengths of a 0.8 mil of about 50 centimetres each. Now this is just what I'm going to be working with. Obviously the length of these, because that's going to create the braid, is going to depend on the cabochon that you're using. So if you're using quite a larger one than I am, you might want longer lengths. Or if you're using a smaller one, you might not need this much. So then what you want to make sure of with all your lengths of wire here is that you straighten them out the best that you can. It doesn't mean that they have to be perfectly straight like that. It's okay if they have a curve from the reel. You just want to make sure that you have no kinks or bends in here. Because obviously we're going to start making the braid and we don't want a kink ending up inside of the braid. So rather straighten out your wires now. And then what I've done is I've taken all my wires here and attached them into a spring clamp. So this is just a regular spring clamp where I've taken all the wires, put all the ends evenly together there as even as possible, put them through the clamp and then left tails of my wires of about 15 centimeters or so. That's going to be fine because we just need lengths of the end of both ends of our braid here to also then make the bail at the end because the braid is going to basically be going across the middle of our wires here. So just leave a bit of a tail on this end where you start out your braid from. So I just put my wires through like this and this spring clamp helps hold on to my wires nice and securely. Makes it much easier to start off working and making the braid but also helps them keep nice and flat next to each other there. So if you have one of them it's really handy to use. So now what we need to do is start making the actual five strand braid. And this is actually really simple. It's just a regular five strand braid where we go over and under, over and under. So I'm always going to take my outside wire, I'm just going to start from one side, it doesn't matter which one. Again, making sure your wires are nice and kinkless and have no bends in that in it. So I'm going to take my outside right one, bring it over the next one, and then under the middle one. Now you're going to probably find the beginning of your braid is most likely going to look a little bit more messy than the rest of it because the beginning is always naturally just messy until we get the braid properly going. We can always salvage that at the end so don't worry too much about that. So that's now been brought into the middle here. Then I'm going to go to the other side, take my left side, bring it over the next one and then under the middle one which is the one we brought in from the other side. So now this one from the left side we'll just work with is now the new middle wire. So like I said just find your rhythm here at the beginning of the braid. Don't worry too much about how it looks. You're going to find your rhythm as we get more of a proper braid going. So like this. So now I have three on this side and two on that side. So that means I know the next one, next side that I'm going to start with is the one that has the most wires here. So I'm going to take the outside one on the right side bring it over the next one and under the middle one and into the middle here and just remember that it's basically the same principle of working with cord when you're braiding except obviously it is a different material so it is a little bit different to work with that's why you want to make sure as you're working with it make sure you straighten out your wires so you don't have any kinks obviously further down because when you're working with your wire it's probably going to get a bit bent 
but just before it gets to the point where it gets incorporated into the braid just make sure you straighten it out so just get your wires in position here and you can tighten it up a bit the braid as you go as well and now we have three on the left side and two on the right side so that means I now know I need to start on my left side so I take the outside one there bring it over the next one and under the middle one and into the middle now that's the new middle one so now I have three on the right side again and two on the left and that is basically the braid so a pretty simple one just be aware that you're working with the wire instead of cord so it is a bit different to work with here take the outside one into the middle and now we're starting to see the braid forming more and it's also at this point where you're going to probably more start finding your rhythm and try and get the braid as even as possible straightening out your wires as you go now like I said don't worry too much about the braid looking perfect it's not too crucial just do the best that you can because we are going to be then shaping it around the cabochon and then it will even out a little bit then as well so just get it as even as you possibly can so keep braiding here for a little while until we have a decent length you can take a piece of scrap cord or something measure around your cabochon to see how long a length you need to braid and then what I'd recommend that you do is braid just a little bit longer than that so braid the length the circumference of your cabochon and a little bit more so I now completed my braid here and made the full length and then a bit more than what I need for the cabochon the circumference of that and then I have the ends I have tails of wire left on both ends which is what we want so now what we need to do is get this ready to get around the cabochon so what I'm just going to do is because obviously the wires are a bit all over the place you just gently bend them so they're coming straight down to keep them out of the way for now just nice soft curves just like that so we can more easily shape this around the cabochon so then what I'm going to do is now bring in the cabochon here because we need to use the actual cabochon itself to help shape the setting here for the braid so I'm then going to take my braid and then we need to start I'm just going to start from the bottom of my cabochon there and about the middle of the braid and then I want to start shaping it around so just following the cabochon you can see I've got quite a bit more, it's probably more braid than what I need but I'd rather have too much because we can easily undo the braid it all depends on once we add the roses as well that's going to add more space as well that's why we need the extra braid so at the top I just want to shape that around a little bit as well I'm going to have to just overlap them just to get a rough shape in there so we know roughly what it's going to be like regarding the cabochon so we now have this and what I want to do is then I'm just basically use the cabochon as a rough guideline I want to then just make the shape of the actual braid a little bit larger than what the cabochon is because not too large either we can still, it, still adjust it as we go but what's going to happen is once we start adding in the roses that's going to add more bulk to the inside of the braid so if we make this too tight and then we fasten it at the top, what's going to happen is we're going to end up not being able to fit the cabochon in. So what we need to do is make sure we have that extra spacing, which is also what I said about having extra braid, because it's hard to judge ahead of time exactly how much extra spacing you need. That also depends how many roses that you want to add. So for now, I'm just going to do this and then get the ends of my braid across the middle here, so they're kind of overlapping in the middle. So we have a rough shape in place now, a bit something like that and then I want to just bend these upwards because we need them to be able to sit properly just next to each other like that. And like I said don't worry too much about the ends of your braid just yet, just keep them braided if you have extra braid there at the top can always unbraid that once we've finished off the actual setting here so I think I'm gonna leave it at roughly something like this because basically this point up here where I'm bending the wires back or the braid rather it's gonna then also end up being the point where we're gonna have the bezel or sorry where we're gonna have the uh, bail not the bezel but if we just start from one side adding the roses 
then we can still adjust that also before we fasten this completely in place. So I'm going to leave it at this for now because I have the rough, sh rough shape in place. And then, you can see here as well, it's going to come around nicely on the back of the cabochon. So there we go. So now this is ready and we've used the cabochon itself to help make the shape. So then the next step now is to get a bunch of roses ready because all the roses that we want to attach around the side here like I said, this braid is just basically the base for attaching the roses onto. Unless you just want to attach some roses, obviously you're going to be able to see some of the braid as well. For this one, I'm going to go all the way around with my roses. So we're going to have it fully covered. Whereas the other one that I did, I just did it on one side there, at the top a little bit. So it's completely up to you how you want to do it. But now we need to get the roses ready. So then to make the roses, what we need is the 0.6mm wire here. And I've just got a length of about 30 centimeters. This is going to be my starting length. So I'm going to, this is going to basically make the largest rose that I want. Because what I like to do is alternate the sizes of the roses. I'm going to put onto that edge of my cabochon. I just think it gives a really nice look and a bit more, you know, the natural, as natural as you can make it really. But that they have different sizes and it's easier to fit the roses in as well and make it cover nicely on the side there. So I'm going to start with a 30 centimeter length and then what I'm going to do is cut a certain amount of that, maybe five or so, cut five lengths of this and then go down two to three centimeters and then cut another five lengths of that, go down again two to three centimeters and then cut five lengths of that and then I do that again, go down two to three centimeters and then cut another about five lengths of that. It's just to start off with because we're going to need quite a few roses to cover the whole, if you want to cover the whole of the cabbage and that is. So basically I'm going to have four different sizes of roses by going from 30 centimeters gradually a couple centimeters down at a time with my length of wire. It's just also to waste as little as possible because that makes, in my opinion, some nice size roses there. It's going to fit nicely on the edge of the cabochon. I'm then also going to use a mandrel here. This is just a multi-step mandrel with different shapes that I have and I've got a round one down here that's got a decent size because what we need to do is it's kind of going to be like making a rose ring if you're familiar with that I'm going to use this to first of all make a circle so what I want to do is put the middle of my wire behind I want to make sure you pretty much find the middle of it so we then hold both ends together just to make sure we want to have as equal lengths as possible so we don't run out of one length sooner than we do on the other side so we can complete the rows basically so I hold on to this and then we need to put bring these two ends together at the top so I grab hold of them and then I put my finger inside and then I twist the wire just keep twisting it around while this shape is around the mandrel there and then I twist it this is one full time and then like just doing it one more time. So basically one and a half times. So now we have this twist here at the top. You can just straighten out your wires. And this is basically going to be the very center of the rows. So now what we need to do is start making the rest of it and building it up. So what we need to do is start with one wire and we're basically going to be chasing, the wires are going to be chasing each other. So I'll bring this around all the way around the midpoint there. Make sure it's kind of nice and tight so we don't have too many open gaps. And I like to also hold my thumb on top of it to try and make sure it stays flat so the wires don't end up bulking on top of each other in the middle or anything, but the rows kind of builds outwards rather than upwards or anything. Bring it underneath the other one and then straighten out as you go as well. And then I like you just to push it up a little bit when you brought it underneath. So that's the first one. Straighten the other one out before you use it. Then now this one needs to chase the one we just moved. So it comes around underneath that one. And then once you've brought it underneath, straighten it out and again just push it upwards a little bit. I just like to push it up like that. It just makes it easier for the other one to bring that back underneath. And make sure you're kind of nice and tight towards the middle there so you don't have too many gaps without overlapping as well though. Again, bring the the one behind underneath the other one and just bring it up a little bit and that is basically all you keep doing making the rows like this and you're going to see always take the back wire bring it underneath the front one 
till it's just come out to the other side and then just kink it up a little bit, bend it up a bit. And you're going to see the rose starting to form quite quickly. You can get that effect of the petals because we're doing this over under type thing with the wires that's chasing each other. And again, like I said, I prefer to hold my thumb on top of the rose there in the middle. It helps keep it nice and flat and have the circles, a spiral basically, that we're making built outward to the side rather than overlapping anything. So just keep going until you get towards the end of your wires. Now obviously because if you're using different lengths of wires like I'm, I am for mine to get different sized roses, the shorter ones are going to be much quicker to do. But regardless they're all pretty quick to do anyway and it's an easy technique this. Always bring the back one underneath the other one and in front. Take the back one underneath and in front. And you can see it's really starting to build up now. You get that rose look. And we're getting towards the end of our wires. Let's keep it on there. Keeping it on the mandrel I find makes it a bit easier to work with as well. Now I think I'm going to see about stopping around here. Just do the one last one. Because then what we need to do, you want to make sure you leave just a little bit of a tail here on both ends. Because I want to secure it in place as well. So I've just taken it off the mandrel. And then I want to just grab, I prefer doing this with my chain nose. Because you can get a much better grip. Because also it's short lengths that we're working with. So I'm going to take one of my lengths here. It really is judgment how you feel which one you want to take. I'm just going to take the front one in this case. It's also the shortest one. Then what you'll find is the rose is built on top of that twist we did in the middle. So we can kind of say this circle that was underneath that were wrapped around the mandrel. You have a gap in between. The rose is kind of lying on top of it. So I'll grab hold of this end and then bring it in between the two. So under the rose but over the circle right there. Bring it around just below the rose. Just bring it around about once or something like that, just to basically secure the end of the wire in place. And then once you're happy that that's going to sit nicely and stay in place, I then take my flush cutters, go in, cut off the excess, because there's no reason to bulk it up too much by going around too many times. And then just make sure, whether, whenever you cut off your wire, the very end here, you always want to try and tuck it away. So you just need to grab hold of it. And then I'm bending it, just the very tip, kind of inwards and downwards. So basically the very tip of the wire is going to nestle right underneath the rose. And it's not going to be sticking out. We need to do the same with the other one. Grab hold of it. Bring it around underneath the rose, but above the circle. Round to the other side. And then have a look. And that's going to be nice and secure like that. Cut off the excess of your wire tail there. And again, just grab the very end of that wire that you cut off. And just give it a little flick with your wrist to make sure that the very end gets nestled in between underneath the rose there. So there we go. This is now the actual rose done. So then what we need to do, because obviously this circle we can't really use for anything, so what I like to do is take my flush cutters again, go to about the middle of the circle, so around there, just judge it by eye, cut it open, and then straighten out the circle. So each side comes out to each side of the rows, sticking out underneath the rows just like that. And just straighten them out so they're nice and easy to work with and ready when we want to start attaching them. And that's basically how you want to make your roses. So I would just say make a bunch of these in different sizes if that's what you want to do. And then once you have a few ready, you can start attaching them. Now obviously you can't know exactly how many you're going to need. So I want to say make a few, attach them. And then if you need to make more, you can always make some more roses and add them onto it after as well. So, you want to just make a bunch of these. So here is the batch of roses that I've made to begin with. As you can see, I've kind of got groups in the different sizes, made a few of each. 
and then I can just use these as I go filling in the space so I can start with a large one then if I need to put in a small one somewhere just to fill a small gap I have them all handy and ready so like I said I find it most handy doing that and then once you wrote, if you go through adding them into the braid you find you need more because you run out you can always make a few more along the way so just start out with these groups and then we need to start attaching them to the braid itself so I've then taking my very first rows that I'm going to start with and then what I'm going to do is actually just bring up the legs here a little bit so they're coming out from underneath the rows and more pointing in this direction because we need to get it through the braid obviously to attach it so what I'm going to do is take the braid that I prepared here now I haven't fastened it yet because we don't know exactly how much we're going to need around the cabochon once we attach the roses but what I do know is I just want to start on this side up here because the bail is going to end up being up here so if I start on this side work my way all the way around if I find I need a bit more of the braid I can always add more on this side by just unbending this because it's only a soft curve that we have so that's why I would personally recommend starting on one side working your way across so we can then add more in if we need to of the braid so I'm going to start up here bring these legs and then we'll decide where we want this rose to sit so if I want it to sit around Try and put it through somewhere, see how you like the way it looks. Bring it all the way down. I think I want to actually just bring it up a little bit to maybe sit. So what I would say would recommend doing is putting one leg between different places in the braid. Somewhere like this. Looks pretty good. You can also flip it around, so just you play around with it, see how you like the way it sits. Something like that. I'm quite happy with that, it's going to look nice. And then I'm going to go to the back here and hold the rose against the braid with my finger on the front so it stays where I want it to sit. And then we need to use these legs to attach to the braid. And all I'm going to do is basically wrap them around wherever is suitable and I think it's going to stay nice and secure. And I have my chain nose pliers handy because sometimes it can be a little bit hard to get your fingers in there with the space. So I want to wrap this one around one of the wires in the braid, whatever wire it's kind of closest to, and have it come back up again. Pull it all the way through. And just you can also just guide the wire that helps a lot because we want to try and get the wrap as nice and kind of tight as possible so it fastens securely around that wire in the braid something like this I want to get it around again I prefer to try and wrap it around about twice because it's going to keep it a bit more stable because you want obviously the roses to sit and be sitting on the braid but stay stable and not be able to kind of wobble around if you can help it I'm going to get it down through the same space and up again to get that second wrap. Always help guide your wire if you need to because you want to make sure you don't pull too much here as well. You want to be careful with that because this is 0.6mm wire, the braid is 0.8mm, so there's not the biggest difference between the two gauges. So you don't want to say pull on the 0.6mm while you're attaching it and then you're pulling the 0.8mm you're attaching it to out of the braid or you're pulling it out of shape in the braid. So try and be careful still. So something like that. You can always squeeze it down a little bit. So that's one of them. Now I want to attach the other leg in the exact same way. I just want to choose a different wire because if you put it on the same wire in the braid it's going to be more likely to be wobbly whereas if you choose a different wire in the braid it's more likely that it's going to be more stable which is exactly what we want so find wherever you want to attach it get your wire the rose attached to the wire in your braid there just take your time doing this make sure it all is going to sit correctly and nicely Rather take your time so it's end up being done properly rather than 
maybe rushing it. Because this, if you want to cover the whole braid around the cabochon, it is going to take a bit of time attaching all these roses. So just to tighten this down around that wire in the braid. So now I've done it twice with both of them here, so we can go back to the front and obviously double check that we're happy with it. I can check that this rose is not wobbly on the braid itself, or at least not too much. Adding more roses in is also going to help make the other ones more stable, but this one feels pretty good to me. All we need to do now is then finish off these tails. You can either do that now, you can leave it a bit. I wouldn't recommend leaving all the tails all the way around, it's going to get really messy. But you could leave a couple at a time and then once you're happy a bit further down, then cut them off. But I'm just going to go cut this off now because I'm quite happy with how it sits. So I'm going to cut it down. So there's about maybe a millimetre or so left. Because then I'm going to take my chain nose and squeeze down the very end. So continue basically rolling it in the direction that it's going. Just to get the end tucked away. The same on this side. Cut off the excess like that and then just make sure you don't have the end sticking out anywhere and there we go that's the very first rose attached and that's exactly how you want to go continue attaching all your roses now you can obviously then judge it as you go you maybe want a smaller rose the next time or you want another one there this is why I then like having the different size roses as well because it's kind of a bit like a puzzle you can see what fits together nicely so you want to use larger ones smaller ones to fill in the smaller gaps so just keep doing this all the way around until you reach the other side and then you need to figure out whether this is going to fit the cabochon or you need to use a bit more of your braid. So I've now gone all the way around the braid here up to the other side attaching all my roses and then it looks like this and obviously along the way you always want to keep referencing back to your cabochon fit it in there to see how it looks and also see how far up you have to go on this side and if it's still going to fit in there or like I said if you need to use some more of the braid and see how far up you need to go until they meet there and fit nicely around the cabochon. So this is where I'm at now and it's then now we can look at the braid that we have left at the top if we have any left. So you can see here I've got some left on this side and then just a tiny little bit on there. So that's what we can just fix now. All we have to do is undo that braid from where it starts right down to the last place where you've attached your roses there. So all you want to do is just gently start undoing it. So separate all your wires out. And obviously undo the braid in the opposite way that you would have made it. And you just want to do this gently and as you separating them out, just smooth them out as well. Because we're going to be using some of these wires to make the bail and we don't want them too kinked or bend or anything. I'm going to pull this through there. And then this side is almost completely unbraided and just these two middle ones so something like that obviously making sure that you keep the part where you've attached your roses so don't braid it unbraid it too far down now I'm going to do the same on the other side so just unbraid whatever you have left of your braid until you reach down where the roses are so after all the roses have been attached there, there's no more braid left that you can see visibly. So now that you've done that, what you're just going to do, instead of having them kind of out to the side too much, I'm just going to press them together so they're a little bit easier to deal with. Because, like I said, it's some of these wires here that we're going to obviously connect the two sides so it becomes one whole piece, but also some of these we're going to use to make the bail. So, now we're at this point. You can see it looks like that from the back. You place the cabochon in. It's going to fit just nice at the top there. So now what we need to do is actually start attaching them together and also capture the cabochon in there within the frame that we've done. So before I attach the two sides together at the top there, what I want to do is then start making the back where it's going to capture the cabochon from the back obviously. So it's not going to fall out through there. And I'm going to do this now before we attach it at the top because it can, at the top here when we do that, you can move some of the wires and rather have it loose so you can pull them through without making anything out of shape that you've already done. 
or loosening the fastening. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start on one side, it doesn't matter what side. What you'll find when you look on the back here, on the braid, you have these little kind of sections of wire going over all the way across, one after the other after the other. It's these that we need to use one at a time. So I'm going to grab the very first one, about the middle of it, and then I want to pull it inwards. So a little flick of the wrist to basically make an angle in it, a bit like that. Now first off we're just going to do a go around all the way around. We can always come back and adjust it more. Also when we're obviously going to add in the cabochon there to see how it fits and if any more needs to be done. Go all the way around to the next one. So keep going all the way around like this. As you can see taking one at a time and you get these little angles that are going to come inwards and that's what's going to help hold the cabochon in place from the back. It's going to be able to grip it around the edge. Now what I want to say as well is this can be a little bit trickier because we've added all the roses because this is what I normally do when I do this braid to capture a cabochon. But because we have all the roses they're obviously attached to the wires in the braid and that can make it a little bit trickier. But that's why I also recommend when you attach your roses try and avoid attaching them to the very outer edge of the braid. So the very wires that we're actually bending inwards now, try and avoid attaching your roses to them specifically and just do it kind of in the middle of your braid. You just keep going all the way around. So now that I've done it all the way around here, I'm going to put in the cabochon so you can see what it looks like. You have these little angles now sticking out that's going to capture just around the edge of the cabochon there and it's going to nice, sit nice and securely once we fasten it all together. So it's going to look like this from the front roughly. There we go. So now we have that in place, what we need to do now is start working on the bail here. So the first thing we need to do is obviously attach the two sides together. So it's going to stop moving around and it's going to really secure the cabochon in place so that it won't be able to fall out or anything. And we'll then keep making the bail as well. So what I'm going to do is figure out just what way I want to use first. Now I think I want to just use the very front one here because it's going to just close up the top nicely. And I'm going to bring that around the bottom as far down as you can get it. And if you can, just get it in behind the top roses there. Make sure that all these wires are squeezed nicely and tight together so they kind of sit in a little cluster like that. Then I'm going to use this and bring it all the way around, around the back as well, and to the other side. And again, I just want to try and get it under this rose. There we go. Just to get this kind of wrap that I'm doing as far down as possible. And also get it as secure as possible there. I'm just going to go around again. You can get under this rose once more. Just help squeeze the wrap down. And then before I go too much further, I want to have a look at my piece and then also see if I'm happy with it or if any adjustments need to be made. So, I have this wire that I was wrapping with and then I want to do any final adjustments if you need to. If you feel the cabochon is in there securely then it should be fine. Otherwise what you can do as well is just take your pliers again and just if you need to adjust these kind of angles that were made to capture the back a bit more then you can do that. So I just want to actually pull the top ones a bit more. So now that I'm happy with everything here, what I want to do is continue wrapping this wire that we wrapped around the ones on the bottom because we just need to secure it a bit more. Just a couple of times around here, just like that. So that's the base of what's going to end up being the bail. Now what we need to do though, because you can see we have a lot of wires here and I don't want to use all of them for the bail, that's going to be a bit too much. So I want to gradually start getting rid of some of these wires. So what I'm going to do with that is gently just separate them out a little bit to figure out which ones you want to get rid of first. Because what I like to try and do is actually kind of choose ones that are more in the middle. So 
so just separating them out here and also you just want to make sure I try and avoid choosing the ones that are just the ones I used at the top here at the back because they're going to be a little bit more loose you don't want to risk them being able to pull out so that's actually that one there so I want to make sure that I don't cut that off just yet and this one looks to be this one so I want to avoid just cutting them for now otherwise what I'm then going to do is take my flush cutters here and then choose the ones that I do want to cut off and then get right in there like I said I prefer to try and do it in the middle of all the wires and get in there and cut off the excess and it's really up to you how many you want to cut off I usually do two to three at a time here just to try and get rid of them as quick as possible be, without adding too much bulk to the bale like that so done three can bring them back together then and then we obviously already have much less wires I'm going to take this and bring it around again to help secure them in place and you can see we're getting some nice wraps there try and keep them nice and tight on the bottom there of the bale if you don't do that too nice and tight there it's not really a big deal because what I also want to say an idea is once you've done the bale if you have a little area up here that you don't think is very nice and you think this you can fit in another rose you can always go in and make a rose or something and just add that to the bale afterwards to cover up anything or right at the bottom of the bale there so it does basically will look like one whole bunch of roses so that's completely up to you but then also because you can do that right at the front there you can cover up extra bit with a rose afterwards you've done it all what I'm gonna do now is I wanna finish this wire off that I've been wrapping with so I'm gonna leave it at the front to cut it off you can also do it at the back if that's what you prefer the reason that I'm doing it at the front is because you can then take that rose afterwards and add it to there which is then gonna cover it if you're not gonna do that you can always do it at the back it's completely up to you I'm just going to cut that off and then just make sure it's squeezed in nicely so the end isn't sticking out and you can feel it too much that's always good practice and then I want to grab another wire <clears throat> so just choose which one you want to use I think I'm going to take this one because I think that was one of these top ones there just to get it used and then what I'm going to do is bend that down here and then I'm going to start wrapping with this. There's not really any other reason than just I find it makes it a bit more secure doing that rather than just using one wire to wrap with. If you're using the first one, cut it off and then another one, it makes the whole thing a little bit more stable I find. But I've just started that wrap now I want to get rid of some more wires. And what I want to end up with is just having two wires available to make the bale with. So that means now, out of these, this bunch that I have left, not counting the one that I'm wrapping with now, I actually need to get rid of three because I have five in total. So have a look at your piece, see which ones you think will fit best to get rid of and which ones you'd want to keep for the bale. So in this case, looking at it, I think I want to actually keep these two front ones. They seem to sit just nicely there next to each other. And I'm going to get rid of these back ones. there, separate them out, cut them as far down as you can again so we don't have to do too many wraps it's going to add a lot of bulk to the bale like that, get them out of the way so now we're left with these two wires and then the wrapping wire as well so what I'm going to do is come around again just do another wrap or two with this one around these two wires on their own because this is going to secure them in place as well and again same principle with this we now need to finish off this wrapping wire as well obviously you can really do with that what you want you can either go to the front just like the other one just cut it off and then you can choose to either cover it with a rose or not or you can make a little swirl with it on the front there make a little feature of it it's completely up to you how you want to do that but we then have these two wires here that's then ready to make the bale with as well. So to get rid of that weaving, the wrapping wire, sorry, 
I'm going to just cut it off of the front just like I did with the other one. There we go. So all we have left now is the two wires for the bail. Just squeeze that down again, just like you always want to do. Now, you have these two left. What you want to make sure of is that they're nice and straight without any kinks or bends in them. So what I'm just going to do is just straighten them out a little bit. You can run your fingers over them. Warms the wire up and straightens out the kinks and bends. You can also use a pair of nylon coated pliers. That'll work nicely as well. So obviously make sure you maybe you don't want to pull too hard, but you don't want to risk pulling anything down here out of shape. You shouldn't do, but just in case, just don't pull too hard. Just try and straighten this out best you can. So now, when we've done that, we need to then start making the bail, and you can use any form of mandrel for that. I like to use crochet hooks because I have a pretty cheap set where you have loads of sizes. I find that really handy for making bales and basically use them as mandrels. So that's what I'm going to do. Get one of my crochet hooks in the size that I want my bale to be. So I have that here. And obviously you maybe want to consider what you want to put this on. If you want to put it on a chain or cord or what kind of piece of material that you want to wear this on. So that can obviously help determine what size bale you need to make, what size mandrel you need to use. So I like to use kind of a mid-sized one, not too large but not too small either. So I have some choices. So what I'm going to do is have these two need to be right next to each other, going straight up. And then I want to just press them forward a little bit, just above where those wraps end. Then I'm going to put my crochet hook behind it on my mandrel, behind both the wires, bend them back around. And then when they're coming up towards the back here, like that, I want to separate them out. So the one that's on the right goes around the right side of my piece, and the one that's on the left around the left side. So they each come around their own side of the bale, basically. Something a bit like that. And then you want to keep wrapping it, each around their own side. And I like to try and get them as tight to each other as possible. The wraps here coils around the mandrel. Back out to the front again. And then just make sure you're happy with how it looks and how your coils sit there. And that they're as even as possible. You can always squeeze them together a bit if you need to. And then this is going to basically be the bale. So you can see you then have a nice hole there, a nice size in my one, depending what you want to use it for. So what we just need to do is fasten these tails in place. Now you can either just cut them down to short lengths and make a swirl or two on the front there, make a feature of it, or you can wrap them around the bale. How you want to do that really is up to you. It also depends that if you had that extra rose that you want to cover there, you can just kind of wrap them around the front to secure them around the bottom of the bale, and then that will be covered up with your rows that you're going to add on as well. And that's what I'm going to do. So what I prefer to do is put my mandrel back through here so my loops and my actual bale doesn't go out of shape while I'm wrapping these tails, because obviously these are the ends of the wire that's making the bale. So I'm just going to take one at a time, wrap it around the bottom, secure it in place, back to where it came from basically. So I wrapped it all the way around and back to the front. The same with the other one. Also just want to wrap it around the bottom of the bale, all the way around the back, out to the same side where it came from. Just so they're nice and secure there. And that wrap really just secures the bale in place as you can see. It's just nice and perfect. It's going to stay in place like this as well. If you need to, you can just correct it, adjust it. So there we go. So now that we've done that, what we have left to do is basically just get rid of these wires. So I'd like to just cross them over towards the middle. And then finish them off here in the middle. You can still make some loops if you want to at the front like that as well. So cut them down to a short length and then just make a little spiral or something. That's completely up to you. Obviously you want to make sure regardless how you do it 
that when you do cut off your wire and have your ends there that you don't have any wire ends sticking out anywhere that's going to catch or scratch on anything so I just have two little ends so I'm just going to just quickly just bend them inwards a little bit just so they're not sticking out because like I said you can then cover this with a row so it doesn't really matter how it looks it's just more to make it secure so you don't have the ends sticking out like I said so there we go and you can make this much nicer if you want to if you don't, especially like I said, if you don't want to cover this with another rose then I would recommend just spending time and making these circles or swirls to finish off the wire nice and neat so this is basically it done we have the cabochon secured with the roses all the way around and then the bale at the top and like I said, if you don't want to add another rose there, you don't have to I'm actually just going to do it just to cover up this little bit and I think it's going to make it a bit more of a cohesive piece so it's basically just the roses all the way around the cabochon and then the bale on the top so to do that you just want to make another rose exactly how I showed you make it the size that you need to cover this area and then you just want to take the tails and basically attach them the same way that we kind of attach them in here the two legs that you have from the rose just wrap them around the bottom of the bale so it's nice and secure and then cut the excess off and then once you've done that you'll have your finished piece here so your cabochon wrapped in roses so these are then the two cabochons that I made here using the exact same technique but you can see whether you want to add roses all the way around or just to a little decorative edge there a certain place on your braid you get a completely different look and obviously also using different materials but I think both look really nice on their own I like the look of having the roses all the way around like that but I also really like this little feature of the roses just on the braid and it blends in nicely because almost like the braid is kind of a vine going around and then you have your roses up there on the side and then you can see the nice cabochons as well so that's how you make these the same technique in both of them just more or less roses so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful as well and thank you very much for watching hello there everyone Today I want to show you how to make this wireframe cabochon with a rose on the front of it so it can look like this and this is the one I'm going to show you how to make today so for this one I used a nice and dark gemstone cabochon behind it so it works perfectly for uniform cabochons colour wise and also I've done a different one previously where I use a rose quartz cabochon so you can see the different looks that you can get just using different materials and they'll never come out looking exactly the same which is always nice